today on Inspiration for the Day. Join Pastor Phil Keaton as he shares a noun word that will speak to your spirit. We're not ready to, for this new wine. We're old wineskins. We're, we, we're set in our way. We don't want anybody to disrupt anything. We want everything to be kosher. We want everything to be just the way it's always been. But the Lord says, hey, I got some new wine. I got something fresh. I've got something from the throne above. Hallelujah. He said, I've got something to give you that will give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. I've got something. I've got a fountain. Hallelujah. That I want you to come to and receive every bit that you need to be refreshed today. There's a fountain flowing from heaven above. You might as well get under the fountain today because God is going to get you wet. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I tell you what, right now I feel like I'm right underneath a waterfall in the Holy Ghost. I want to speak to you about the king enters Jerusalem in John 12 and verses 12 and 13. The next day, the great crowd had come for the festival, heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Hosanna! Hosanna! You know, there was a praise in their hearts because Jesus was passing by. How many of us know anytime Jesus passes by, there will be some praise that rises up within you, some worship that rises up within you. Oh, hallelujah. You see, as Jesus Christ had been there with Lazarus and, and hanging out with him after raising him from the dead, you know, I, I'd like to have a friend like that that could raise me up after four days. Hallelujah. And then we could come and hang out together. Oh, in Bethany. And they were having a big time. But now it was time for Jesus to enter into Jerusalem and they had a praise in their hearts the people did because they knew he was the son of David he was of the lineage of David and they were looking for the king to as Zechariah 9 in verse 9 had already prophesied and said rejoice greatly daughter of Zion shout oh I like that daughter of Jerusalem see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. Oh, on a colt. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ humbles himself to come to where you're at? I don't care if you're in the deepest gutter. I don't care if you're in jail. I don't care where you're at. Jesus can come to where you are. See, he's the good shepherd. He leaves the 99 to go after the one. And you were the one that he went after. He left the 99. He said, I'm coming to where you are. You might have been running. You might have thought, I don't have a, a desire at all to know who God is. But God says, but I want you to know who I am. Aren't you glad that he didn't leave you? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll go with you how far? Always. Even unto the end of the earth. And so they begin to start saying, Hosanna, the king is coming into, just as Zechariah 9 and verse 9, and just as Daniel had said, after 483 years, the Messiah would come and be cut off. They didn't understand exactly what it meant when he said that he would be cut off. But we know, don't we? They just saw him as the king rising up to take over Israel and to, Create a revolt against Rome. you, you got to go in your mind to what they were looking for in their Messiah. They were looking for freedom. They were tired of paying all the Roman taxes. They didn't like those folks. Remember Matthew? But Jesus says, hey, come on over here, Matthew. I'm going to give you a gospel to write about me. Hallelujah. I'm going to take the person that the people think, oh, I don't like you because you want to get taxes for Rome. And so they thought Jesus was going to overthrow the government. And so Caiaphas was actually, they were in a room debating about this. Now, these are the same people who had already seen the blind man that was blind from birth that was seen. And, and they asked him about, uh, they said, well, what, what's going on with you? He said, well, 
of this man named Jesus passed by. How many of you are glad this man named Jesus passed by one day? And when you were blind in your, in your vision of God, but Jesus opened your eyes. And they had seen and heard. They said a lot of people are following Jesus after Lazarus got out of that grave. They said, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to kind of temper that down. It's hard when somebody's been in there four days. We can't say, oh, they hiccuped. We can't say, well, it was just a second or two. No. So the people had praise in their hearts for the king. But they were looking for a specific kind of king. They didn't read Isaiah 53. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried away our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Thank you, Isaiah, for giving us that prophecy about Jesus. Hallelujah. So that wherever, whenever you want to show somebody how Jesus is described in the Old Testament, there's so many Psalms. Chapter 22 talks about all of the things. He said that the, uh, they would be surrounded by sinners at his death. But you know, Jesus was coming in. And so as he's entering into town, the people start shouting. That means getting louder. <laughs> you don't shout with a whisper. Some people come to church and say, oh, you got to be real quiet. Don't get too loud. Bill Russell, don't get too loud. My goodness, can you imagine Bill in a church like that? They used to call him Wild Bill. Oh, but one day God got a hold of that heart. One day God said, I got something for you to do. He reached out, didn't he? And you, that spirit drew you. And y'all, some of you don't know his testimony, but he was just going fishing that day. He was just taking his wife, you know, to a, a Perry Stone meeting. And he was just going to drop her off. said, bye, honey, but God got in and said, you go on inside. And what I love about this is before there was any singing or preaching, he had an experience with God as he came through the door. The Holy Spirit came upon him. And he's been changed. And his life is a witness of the power of God. What God can do. Aren't you thankful for what God can do? Oh, praise the Lord. All of us got a testimony. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So, you know, it's like somebody coming up to you and, and the, in Jerusalem that day, they were saying, be quiet. They said, be quiet, you know. Don't make too big of a ruckus. Don't act Pentecostal. But Jesus said, if they don't praise me, the rocks and the stones will cry out praises. Because all of creation cries out in praise. How many of you, when you go out and you see the wonder of creation in different parts, on a, you go on a hiking trip and you go up that mountain and there's, there's a stream running through there and a waterfall and, and you see the glory of God in nature. Hallelujah. You're up. Hallelujah. I'm driving through there. I, I tell you what, I'm driving through. And how many of you know that sometimes it's like I told uh, Debbie, I said, come on, we're going to go on the road to Hana. The road to Hana. And so I got her in the car and we started going around them curves and she said, hey, I want to go back to the hotel room take me back what where have you got me but there was these great waterfalls and scenes along the ways but there was also hairpin turns where you didn't know what was coming around the corner and then there was big cliffs and drop-offs she was praying like she's never prayed before she was really praying God's got to have a sense of humor, amen? 
But you know, his, his creation is so awesome. I, and I, was, I love to look at Israel, too, and Jerusalem, you know. If you get a chance, just watch, watch a video of the last week of Jesus. And uh, I, I tell you, there's some wonderful videos. Thank God for these people who do. One for Israel is also a great resource and, and other ones as well. But, you know, the thing is, is go with me to Jerusalem. Let's go. Hallelujah. And walk where Jesus walked in our spirit. Oh, you don't have to have your feet there. Your spirit can be there today. The Holy Spirit can reveal more about Jesus to you. Because Jesus, who had been having fun with Lazarus, you know, how many of you know Jesus likes to have a good time? Amen. He wants us to enjoy life and enjoy the kingdom of God. He wants, how many of you have got the joy of the Lord? Anybody else got the joy of the Lord? I, I said, does anybody have the joy of the Lord? Woo! Thank you, Lord, for touching Mike in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. It blesses my soul to see how the Lord is blessing people and they're re recovering from different things. You know, Bill fell off a ladder. He come in with Band-Aids all over last Wednesday night. I, I needed to about run out of Band-Aids up there and I'm praising the Lord and, and Debbie's behind me trying to put a Band-Aid on my arm. <laughs> and you know how I move around when I'm up here. You know, it ain't like I, I don't stand still. Amen. Oh, I got some dancing in my feet. Oh, praise the Lord. He'll put joy in your soul that makes my feet want to dance with joy. You say, well, that's not biblical. Well, David danced, didn't he? Hallelujah. <laughs> and Delroy danced, amen. Oh, praise the Lord. But the joy, there was so much joy that day. Because this was the fulfillment of the prophecy. And they recognized it. But the religious leaders of that day said, he's a threat. We're not, we're not ready to, for this new wine. We're old wineskins. We're, we, we're set in our ways. We don't want anybody to disrupt anything. We want everything to be kosher. We want everything to be just the way it's always been. But the Lord says, hey, I got some new wine. I got something fresh. I've got something from the throne above. Hallelujah. He said, I've got something to give you that will give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. I've got something. I've got a fountain. Hallelujah. That I want you to come to and receive every bit that you need to be refreshed today. There's a fountain flowing from heaven above. You might as well get under the fountain today because God is going to get you wet. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I tell you what, right? now I feel like I'm right underneath a waterfall and the Holy Ghost is just pouring out into me. Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, praise the Lord. I believe they were excited that day and the disciples seeing Jesus being recognized as the Messiah. Yeshua, Mishiach, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the last Part of that is his mission. He is the Christ. Now, he had walked with Peter. You know, him and Peter were their buddies. You know, it's okay to have some buddies along the way. So he's talking to Peter. He said, you know, I'm going to go to that cross. Peter said, now, wait a minute. Wait one minute, Jesus. I have decided you're not going to a cross. I have decided, Jesus, let me straighten you out. You ever try to straighten God out? What I mean is, try to tell God, God, this is a better plan. I got a better plan. I got a better way to make this happen. 
And Peter's like, no. Now, he, he, was, he meant well because he had said, though all will deny you, he said, I will never deny you. And Jesus said, before the rooster croaks, you will deny me three times. What? Lord. And Jesus had to say, get thee behind me, Satan. Not, it would, he was talking to that spirit that was trying to motivate Jesus not to lay down his life. Now, Jesus, I want you to understand, he had human emotions just like you. And when he went to pray in that garden of Gethsemane later, after that day of rejoicing and festival, everybody's in getting ready for the Passover. But you know, Jesus had more things he wanted to do. Yes, he did. He wanted to wash the disciples' feet. So here he's held as king of kings. And the next thing you know, he says, Peter, come over here. I want to wash your feet. You be the first one. Now, in those days, think about it. They didn't have those high-dollar shoes like you got. Amen. And they, they didn't have snickers. Sneakers. Sneakers. I'm getting to see where my brain is. <laughs> Sneaker bar. <laughs> it sounds good to me. I know Bobby likes some Snickers too. <laughs> Y'all quit snickering. <laughs> but, you know, there they are. They're, 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 the servant would wash the people's feet when they would come in. And so here Jesus starts and Peter says, I'm not worthy of that. Lord, you can't do that. There he is again. Saying, Lord, you can't do something. You know. If the Lord wants to do something, quit arguing with him. Amen. I understand he felt unworthy. So he's saying, Lord, no, I should wash your feet, Lord. You don't wash my feet. And the Lord said, I came to serve and not be served. He said, come here, Peter. He said, if you don't let me wash, my, if you don't let me wash your feet, you will have no part of me. And then Peter's like, wow, Lord, also give me a shampoo while you're doing it. He said, my head also. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. And I can just see the love of Jesus while he's washing their feet. That love is being transferred. See, here's the thing. In John, John also, you know, he says, I'm the disciple who Jesus loved. But then he said, Lazarus. He, he, he said, but he loved Lazarus. How many of you know he loves every one of us? He wants to hang out with every one of us. He wants to serve every one of us today. In this service, he really is serving everything that's been done today. You know all the preparation that was made for today. It was where somebody was washing your feet. Anytime you do anything, he said, when you've done it for the least of these, my brethren, you've done it for me. Any act of service that you do for somebody else is bringing the goodness of God. Hallelujah. You're, you're transferring the goodness of God. You're reflecting his goodness, mercy, and grace, and touching another with your spirit is ministering and touching and blessing. So you see the Lord, he had to wash their feet, and then he had to go to Gethsemane, and here he is in his humanness after he served them, and now he's going, and he said, guys, I want you to watch while I go pray. And so he, he's praying and seeking the Lord. And, and his blood becomes his sweat, becomes his drops of blood. Now think about that. They say when you get so intense, the blood can flow out of the skin. When the intensity reaches a certain level in a person. And so Jesus, his sweat became his drops of blood. Just like the olives being pressed. His spirit was being pressed. You say, why? Because he's human at that point. He's God, he's, he's human. He has the same emotions. He don't want to go to a cross. Who wants to go to a cross? But love can make you go, go and do things. Greater love has no man than this. He lays down his life for his friends. And thank you, Lord, for all of our soldiers and officers and everybody willing to lay down their life. And so, oh, thank you, Father. Jesus was there praying. 
And his, his love for you was being poured out. And he said, Lord, if there be another way, let this cup pass from me. What was the cup? The cup was the cross. In other words, if, if mankind can be saved another way, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now, Judas has betrayed him and is heading towards the garden to give him a kiss. They said, how will we know which one is Jesus? He said, it's the one that I kiss. But that shows you the relationship Jesus had with those people. The, the, the closeness that they share. Do you know it's all right to have a close friend? It's all right to have several friends. It's all right to have a lot of friends. But you know what? Sometimes if a friend betrays you, see, that's, that's a tough thing, isn't it? It's a very tough when a friend betrays you. And Jesus said, I'm willing to go through that because I want to know what they feel like. So if anybody's ever betrayed you and you've thought, man, how could that be? And the Lord just says, hey, I'm right there. I understand exactly how you feel. And even though Judas, I, he may have been thinking he was forcing the hand of Jesus so that he would reveal who he was, but we know the enemy was working to, to work in his heart, but yet God's plan was being manifest because it was Judas who was the instrument that brought the soldiers to Jesus. Very interesting because, see, it had been foretold. All of these things had been foretold. In fact, Jesus, at the Last Supper, as he was having his meal with his disciples, when Judas dipped his bread, they would dip their bread into the wine, and, and they would sop, sop it like that. And he said, he who dips and sops, he said, that, that's the one that will betray me. And he told Judas, what you do, you must do quickly. In other words, you've already got this in your heart now. Go ahead and do it quickly because now is the moment because this is the Passover. This is when the lamb is slain for the people to be forgiven. This is the, the time when the high priest is going to offer up the sacrifice. But he said, I'm going to become your sacrifice. You won't need to bring a lamb. You won't need to bring a sacrifice to the Lord because I am going to, I am that I am. I am the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. He who is, he who was, he who is to come. I am the almighty God, but I am willing to go every step of the way for you I will not stop hallelujah I will not let the pain drive me away you know I think about what it was like in those days and and now we have all this anesthesia but I want I think about what it was like when he went and those soldiers grabbed him but before they grabbed him they said who are you Jesus and he said I am and they fell back because Christ said no man takes my life I lay it down freely Aren't you thankful he laid down his life for you? Ooh, thank you, Father God, for sending your son Jesus. And you know what? He had done everything the Father asked him to do. He had made it. He brought truth where there was injustice, where they were selling all of the different animals and the poor people couldn't afford one to get into the temple and Jesus started turning over tables. Somebody said, well, you know, you've always got to be so kind and easy going. Well, it's good to be kind and easy going, but sometimes you gotta turn the table over. Sometimes you gotta say, this is not justice. This is injustice, this isn't right. Everybody should be able to come into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I told everybody, come unto me. That's why he said, your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then he said, you know what? He said, you tear down this body, this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Woo! Somebody. Yeah. 
In three days I'll rise it up. How can he rise up a temple? He said, the temple is right here. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He said, you're going to put me in the, da- in the ground, but in three days I'm coming out of that ground. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. And you know what? The religious people of that day got irritated. You know, it's okay to irritate people sometimes. Amen. Boy, sometimes you got to turn the table over. Sometimes you got to say, hey, this is the way it is. Sometimes you might even raise your voice just a little bit, Gary. And when the devil tries to attack you, say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hey Amen. If he's beating up on somebody in your family that you love, you rebuke that enemy and tell him to get out of there and leave your family alone. Sometimes you might have to lay hands on them suddenly. They may need prayer. But seriously, they, you know what? They may be thinking all this and say, hey, is it all right if I pray with you right now? Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Sometimes that prayer will break through. Oh, when, when, the, when the enemy's trying to bring destruction into uh, relationships and into families and their homes, and then you say, wait a minute, let's have a moment of prayer here. Hallelujah. You say, well, uh, I mean, it looks like all hell's broke loose. That wouldn't happen in none of y'all's house. That, that's the house of the people down the street. That's the Baptist church. That's Baptists. That's the way they act. <laughs> Y'all know that's a joke, amen. Amen. Because you know what? We all need God to intervene in our lives. Sometimes. And sometimes it is good to take a break. And sometimes it's good to take a break and get out the door. Amen. It's like, hey, quit, quit hanging there. Sometimes it's time, like, let's give this thing a break and let's go pray. Amen. But Jesus showed us the power of prayer because the power of prayer helps us to push through when the enemy attacks us. I said, the power of prayer, you get to praying and you'll begin to push through the darkness and press through. You'll press on. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. The enemy comes in, attacks you. You rebuke him in the name of Jesus. I tell you what. You know, the Bible tells us that you can't pour new wine in old wineskins. The old wineskins can't take the new wine because the new wine will cause the wineskins to burst because when it ferments, it will expand. You know, God has made us to receive His living Word. And sometimes it challenges us to expand and to grow. And like I heard one guy say, Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. And it's so true that we need to be flexible in our lives because it means that when God speaks to us and He expands upon our understanding of Himself, that He takes us to greater places. So let's be that new wineskin and let's stretch for Jesus.